React India. Hi everyone. I'm not gonna lie. I'm speaking for the first time and I am scared. But let's see how this goes. Uh, Woo! Give it up. First time. Woo! 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 Yeah, I like the energy. So, okay, let's start with a quick Q and A. How many of us are engineers here? Awesome. Expected, right? How many of us have done computer science engineering? <coughs> awesome. How many of us have paid attention in the computer graphics class? <laughs> no? Okay. Okay. This is your chance of redemption. This is computer graphics part we do. We'll try to understand how Blink works and how when you write all of this HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and how, how do you end up with pixels on the screen, right? Because pixels are controlled by device drivers and you write something on VS code and somehow they end up. So something is, some magic is being done inside the middle and this is where Blink comes in. Awesome. Again, a lot, uh, my introduction, I am Siddhant, people call me Sid and this is all my credentials you have heard about from Anjana. Let's move ahead. <coughs> all right, quick question again. This is a quick viva right now. Who renders the pixels? Which part of the computer render pixels on the screen? I heard the answer, yes. GPU, correct. So how do we, so our main goal as we understand Blink is how do we convert, so basically, how do we convert HTML tags to correct GPU calls and GPU will handle the rest of it because that is where the hardware part of stuff comes in. So our goal right now is we are sitting at this top level, we are sitting actually a level above this, we are writing React which gets converted to HTML and CSS and JavaScript and we have to make correct GPU calls and that is how we have pixels on the screen. So it's pretty easy, right? So <clears throat> when I say content, I mean everything. I mean HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, WebAssembly, WebXR, iframe, everything is content for me. But usually the starting point is HTML because first, it get, uh, first HTML gets loaded and then it makes suitable calls to load everything. So let's start with HTML. Uh, everything that you see inside Blink, so Blink considers this as the web content. So this is a public library that Blink uh, offers, that Blink serves as part of the public API that whenever you hit a new tab, you can create a content. So this is called a content class and everything inside the red box is part of the content except all the tab information, reload, bookmarks, extensions. Apart from that, everything inside the red box is a content. All the rendering that happens inside Blink happens in a sandbox environment. So in a sandbox, Blink is a small part of the sandbox environment. The other part is a Chromium compositor that will come. Uh, there is a little distinction. There is some historical baggage between these two. But I'll try to explain what these both does. The sandbox environment is important because you don't want that if you have one tab open and it can, it can access some vulnerability in Blink's code base, it doesn't want you to affect your computer or your device drivers because it can make those calls you don't want. So Google pioneered this uh, when they were building the Blink that everything will happen in the sandbox environment. Right, <laughs> okay. Now let's move one level above the GPU. So we, as the Blink renderer, we don't make with direct GPU calls because GPU calls are usually a part of the dynamic function pointers that device drivers offer. And they, so we don't want to write Blink code for each different browser. We want to write a specific rendering engine and we want to write a library which can look up uh, those dynamic driver functions and make those necessary calls. So that is where OpenGL comes in. And there are other libraries as well, something like Vulkan, which is newer and supported right now. But uh, all of the legacy code base is written in OpenGL. So now our goal is to convert content, which is our HTML, into correct OpenGL calls. So now we have gone from the GPU to OpenGL. We are getting closer. Right. Now, one more important goal that you would see is for example, rendering is not static, right? For, uh, we are not living in, in 1999 that we have a uh, static web page and all of the contents is all of the content is there. It is read only and there is no updation. We are living in the React era and there is no HTML to be honest. If you don't render on the server, uh, all of it is written in JavaScript and you have to make uh, you have to make a lot of updates. There are animations, there are scrolling, overflows. Everything is happening. 
and so we have to make correct data structures to update these uh, we have to make correct data structures so we don't render again and again the entire pipeline so we have to make those efficient so this is the next goal of the blink rendering engine all right the first step of the rendering engine is to convert html to dom dom we have heard about it let's di uh, dive a little bit into how this works all right so this is the content that we receive this is a very i think contrived example of what we usually write when we write html so there is a div and this gets passed on to an html document parser this is a class and uh, that goes to the html tree builder and a dom is created now this dom is not the dom that you usually see inside the inside the chrome it is exactly one to one replica but this is a pointer dom that is written inside c++ and this is not accessible to anyone uh, except the blink rendering engine but we have to write js queries right we have to access the dom so v8 does this trickery something called bindings that you can access you can so it provides um, it provides methods over c++ dom that you can directly uh, access using js queries so for example you write something dot append child it adds a root to the dom you add something uh, so yeah it provides a lot of methods over your normal tree data structure through something called bindings the code for bindings is actually pretty simple to understand if you go through it you will uh, i have uh, i have haven't put any sort of link to any of the code but this code is specifically simpler to understand you should be able to go ahead uh, the uh don't just go through the c dot cc classes and you should be able to go ahead and understand what this is doing and so yeah now we have a dom so now we have a dom tree document object model same thing now the second part of the content the styles are loaded now we have to apply the styles because we can't so whenever an html is loaded the styles can be loaded directly or it can be loaded from a specific cdn some uh, we can do any sort of trickery with styles but we have to apply the styles bef before laying out the information because styles are basically control knobs so you can transform rotate font size anything you can do with styles so we have written a style over there that is called a selector because it selects in the dom tree so now the style rule application happens and this happens on a different tree so now the styles are passed the styles are passed using the css parser and there is another tree is made called the css om tree and this is again the css object model it is a pointer tree inside c++ and it gives you style sheet contents which which uh, which is a wrapper class for style rules each style rule contains the property and the value so for example each style rule would contain for div it would contain background as the property and blue as the value color as the property and red as the value now the style resolver walks the entire dom tree and it generates computed style sheet you would have seen this style sheet if you have worked with react or any of the web technologies this you can see directly inside chrome if you want i can show you right now but uh, whenever you hit on a uh, whenever you hit on an element you see a computed tab right so it the style resolver and the style sheet contents it generates uh, the styles for each of the each dom element so for example it will generate for uh, div it will generate for body it will generate for the text content for each element it will generate a computed style sheet and you can check the computed tab in uh, dev tools and there is a methodology that it uses to style resolver uses a bunch of pre written json that gets converted to your c++ files using a python script that you can that is again a very uh, high level example of what it does but this is how it generates style sheet and it uses a specific i'm sorry it uses a specific way of resolving styles and you can check how styles are resolved so for example if you have a bang important it will resolve that style first if you have something else it will resolve that style first so all of this specificity that is written inside style resolver all right now we have to so now we are done with two steps one is parsing and the other is the style resolution so we are done with two steps now we have to lay out the information right so layout is nothing this step calculates the bounding rects for each of the elements so you see uh, the red box contains what is the x coordinate what is the y coordinate what is the height what is the width and a lot of these properties you when you write get bounding uh, rect client all of these properties are calculated in this step called the layout at the end of the style engine 
uh, you uh, there is a new tree that gets generated called the layout tree we'll come uh, later to that all right so there are two types of flows that happen in layout one is called the block flow this is your div for example if you write div and write everything there is a block flow it flows from top to bottom and the other is the inline flow it flows from left to right in modern language in all of the english languages and in hebrew it flows from left to right in japanese it flows top to bottom there are a lot of ways that uh, layouting happens we will uh, we'll just talk about it flowing from left to right basically like a span right now all right now we have to calculate the information that each glyph has because we have to cal so whenever you write a diff you have to calculate what what each uh, glyph would take because we have to make gpu calls right we have to render the exact we have to render the exact spacing so there is an open source library called harfbus which does this for you so blink has the blink uses this open source library which calculates the bounding rects for each glyph in the font family so j k f all of these are calculated and these are then passed on to the next stage uh, called the layout tree so this, this uh, sorry this is the same stage we are talking about the layout tree is a one to one mapping of the dom tree uh, there is a uh, there is some differences there are some differences but we don't have to care about that so the document is layout view html is layout block flow body is block flow and a lot of these things happen so it is for now we can consider that the layout tree is a one to one mapping of the dom tree uh, there is a little caveat right at the bottom that i have written read on shadow roots because you can have dom inside dom and how does that work and blink is in the middle of a rewrite called the layout ng which uses immutable objects for updation uh, if you want to talk about it i can talk about it but i would recommend that you read about it but because it is not complete and it is in the middle so this is an incremental rollout that they are doing uh, they are you updating each ele each element one uh, one by one and not the entire thing so whenever you read about blink sometimes you would read that uh, layout ng so instead of layout block flow you would see layout ng mix in or layout ng block flow that is the next generation of things that makes the updation much faster inside blink all right now we have the layout tree so for example there is a diff let's go back in this uh, there is one diff and in this only one block flow is created and for p only one block flow is created what happens that if i have a hello world and for example if i have a div and the entire text i have a website with just text so how does that work it will create only one layout block flow but what physical fragment tree does is it uses the output from the harf buzz library and uh, it creates a physical fragment tree and actually generates the coordinate so for example for the first line it will generate a it will generate one node of the tree for the next line it will generate another node and it will actually mention the coordinates so this is what the physical frag this is how the physical fragment tree differs from the layout tree so now we have three steps we have the parsing step we have the style step and we have the layout step so three steps are now done and the next step is actually where we get a little deeper into how the paint is actually happening but it is also relatively high level uh, so the each uh, whenever we created the when when we created the layout view we had layout block flow all of these are part of the layout object which is a parent class and the layout object has a method called paint which recursively calls on all of the methods of the which recursively calls on all the methods of the tree and this method generates paint ops and this is where again uh, we are getting a relatively low level but these are not operations this is a tape recording of what would happen when we when we try to render all of this for example when we when we add the paint call it will say draw rectangle with coordinates and it will pass the coordinates from the physical fragment tree and it will say draw text block with coordinates again this will pass the outputs from the harf bus library that we talked about so all of this is fed into the paint paint artifact and we generate a sort of tape recording and we we haven't executed yet because these are just in memory right now all right so painting happens in a different order uh, than we usually see so first so first we render the background so for example first all the backgrounds are rendered then floats are rendered then foregrounds and then outlines inside the foreground you can control some with something called a stacking order which you can control using z indexes you would have already used this but this is all inside the foreground phase and you can't control backgrounds and floats all right this is a paint up example that i have used so the first paint up is 
the document background so first the blink fills the entire background with uh, with a with a white color so first is draw rectangle op and k fill style of white color and next it fills the next it fills another background for the pixels and it fills with gray color and it fills the border as well border is also a background and it is passing the correct flags and the correct coordinates alongside and then it fills the then there is a painting face so this is how the paint ops are generated for a very contrived and smaller example like this all right now we have we already had parsing we had styles we had layout we had physical fragmentary we generated the paint ops but now we actually raster the entire thing raster is nothing but we call the raster method on the paint op and it generates a bitmap inside the gpu memory or the cpu memory depending on if you have hardware acceleration enabled or not so the the entire step when raster is completed again everything is called recursively for example when you call raster on the paint op method everything is called recursively on each of the uh, each of the physical fragment trees and a bitmap is generated uh, a bitmap is nothing it is just a map of each pixel of what its color is or its 256 bit value so this is the what a bitmap is and all of these bitmaps are stored inside either cpu memory or gpu memory depending on if you have hardware acceleration enabled or not Uh, for images images are also converted into bitmap so for example if you have a jpeg image uh, blink would call the correct decoder for that and it will convert into exif and then into bitmap so now this entire process happens and the raster the the process paint op it gets rastered and then raster is fed in inside this library called skia i think wilva talked about it yesterday so this is the same graphics library that blink uses uh, the uh, with something called sg uh, canvas and skia calls this we call this method on the sg canvas on skia this is again very uh, deep level on how things work you just need to know that bitmaps are fed into skia and it opens uh, it issues open jail commands so now we are there uh, just a little bit of uh, we need to do a little optimization because we talked about it in the start that Uh, we are running inside a sandbox so you can't issue gpu calls you can't issue device driver calls from a sandbox right so now we have to do a little bit of optimization on what we can improve here but uh, i i hope we are clear i can repeat on stuff so are we clear up to this point awesome all right so we are uh, to the open gl commands and okay so this is what happens when we go from paint ops to issuing open gl commands because we are running inside the sandbox we need to move out of the sandbox so now also there is uh, an important stuff that uh, there is an important optimization that blink does that uh, whenever it has to move out of the re renderer process it uh, it wraps everything in a gpu command buffer and uh, passes all the paint paint ops to the gpu process this other process is called the gpu process this process is called the renderer process and for example if your dri device driver fails or anything happens we, we don't need to do the entire rendering again right we we can just spawn up another gpu process we can just request device drivers again and we can just pass the paint ops so this is another optimization that blink does and this all happens through ipc interprocess communication and uh, yeah all right for windows there is again uh, another optimization that blink does because open gl does not work with windows vulkan does work with windows and it so i think they are moving towards it but uh, all of the device drivers are not supporting vulkan right now so you have to stick with open gl so this is another open source library that google maintains something called angle and it converts opal gl commands to direct com direct x commands because that works the compatibility is better with uh, windows right now and there we have it so we went from dom to style to layout to paint to raster and gpu and then there were pixels on the screen so this is how the entire pipeline of tags or css or javascript to pixels work there is one caveat though rendering is not static so we haven't moved from we have moved from static html and static javascript uh, static css to pixels on the screen but how do we update right so that is how out of the scope of this call because i removed those slides because those were a little complex but if anyone wants to talk about it uh, because these are not all the th this uh, blink works on three di different threads i can give you a small example blink works on three different threads one is the main thread the uh, on which the javascript competes as well one is the impl thread so 
impel thread is of the chromium compositor which breaks your entire which breaks your page into layers in something called a pre-paint stage and it rasters when it uh, when it is updating it rasters only certain layers so this is how uh, updation happens but yeah again if you want to talk about it you can work i would recommend reading on this uh, the documentation is a little sparse but you would get it and yeah i think that covers it i just wanted to uh, put it out here at i work at nirvana and we are hiring right now so if you are if you are looking out for roles uh, we would be happy to uh, I, i would be happy to refer you guys and uh, i know market is a little tough right now for hiring uh, so i just wanted to give out give a shout out to these guys uh, they have worked with me a lot so uh, one and they're looking for a front end interns role so if any of you are hiring i would highly recommend that you give them a chance and yeah don't forget to wear your sunscreens as long as you are on the beach and that's it Thank you guys.